Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today I am going to show you how to create this vector image here that looks like a half-eaten apple. Now I've taken this image as a reference and I'm going to try and copy it in vector form. So we're going to be going over a few effects here. We're going to be using our transparency we're going to be using the Pathfinder and we're going to be using some gradients. And I'll show you how we're using all of them to create this image here. If you haven't got these panels here to the right, then go to the top bar, click Window, and you'll be able to select these from the menu. Let's get back our Pathfinder. Okay, so let's get into it. Right, so as you can see here, we've got a new artboard, got the image, which we're going to use in a second to get our colours, and you can see I've already drawn out the outline of the apple. Now, I've done this in a previous video, um, basically in that video I showed you how to use a technique to use the pen tool to trace an image pretty quickly and efficiently. So um, if you haven't seen that video, click here, um, you can find out how. But um, I'm going to just proceed with what I've already done. So um, if you've already seen it, then um, welcome back, and we're going to crack on. Right, so first things first, let's get ourselves some color references. So using the eye picker tool here, or the eyedropper tool, I'm going to select this green. And once I've selected that green, I've got it in my color selection. I'm just going to click and drag this into our swatches. And by doing that, we're going to create a new swatch color. And we'll be using that one later on. Now, I also want to, as we can see in this apple, we've got an array of greens. Um, and I'm looking to get about three. I'm looking to grab the dark, the medium light, and the light sort of shine here. So let's grab this medium light. I'm going to drag that into our swatches and then grab this almost white. I can tweak that later on. Okay, right. So in the previous video I drew around the whole object so I got the stalk in there as well but this this is going to prove pretty impractical as and when we start to generate these layers. So First thing I'm going to do is get rid of this stalk. I'm just going to grab hold of the uh, direct selection tool. I'm going to click and drag over the nodes to create that stalk. I'm just going to quickly press delete. And that's going to get rid of them. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in, pressing Z, hotkey. So quickly zoom in there. And I want to create this as a seamless shape. So I'm going to move that node along and I'm going to click on the pen tool and I'm going to move my mouse pointer onto the end of that node and we'll see that the mouse pointer changes from an X to a, like a, a dash. Click once and then move it over to the end of the other node and click once. And that's it. Um, we have, that's pretty much created a complete shape that's going to be useful actually fit the canvas right then so what we're going to do next is we're going to fill this apple body in so I'm going to click the body and we're going to come over here to our swatches and there's a pre there's already a, a stroke uh, sorry, sorry a gradient so I'm going to click that once and with that selected, I'm going to come down to our gradient panel, and you can see we can we can edit the gradient here. So, first of all, I'm going to double click on the color there, and I think we're going to go to our swatches, and we've predefined some of the colors here familiar on. So I'm going to select the green, click off that, I'm going to bring this over. If we look closely, look closely, the opacity is currently at 0%. That's why it's sort of fading to white. So we're going to buff this up to 100%. I'm going to double click on that color. 
double click, select our medium green, and then I'm going to select, I'm going to click in the area, notice the mouse pointer, it's black, when I move into this area it's got a plus, if I click once, it's going to add another colour. Excellent, double click on that, and we're going to select that white colour from earlier. And then select with that selected, we click off. Now at the moment, if we look at that gradient, it's going from left to right. We want it to be a linear. We want to emulate that little sort of um, light reflection there. So in our gradient panel, we're going to click on the linear and click radial. And what has it done there? It's gone the wrong way round. Okay, so. It's pretty much a case of just moving these little colors around, so we can just move that, click and drag these over there, like so. So here we have it. With our, We don't have to worry too much about the gradient, it might not look how we want it so far. But with the object selected, let's go over to our menu. And if we click on the gradient tool, you'll notice that uh, we've got some properties that we can edit here. Basically, with, with this select, I'm just going to click on the mouse, click and drag, click and hold the left button and drag, and I'll leave go of my mouse. And when we, we, can, we can move this around by clicking the center one, we can move it around a bit. So I can make this bigger, let's get that nice and maybe, we can, we can toggle this, we're going to be playing with this around for a while just to get it right. Um, hmm. Not sure about that center. It's not that center color. It's a bit. It's a bit. It's not bright enough. Let's double click on this color. Whoops. What did I do there? Command Z. Undo that. Gonna click off. Click on my shape. Come down to our gradient. Double click on that. And we want to adjust that color. So at the moment it's on swatches. We want to go to the one above which is color because that will give us some options to tweak so I'm just gonna tweak that color there try and make it as make, make it quite bright and come back to our gradient uh, select that with our gradient let's move it around Oops. okay well I'll, I'll leave it like that for now I'll leave it like that for now I mean we'll play with that later on Okay, let's get rid of that stroke as well from the outside. Okay, all right, so I'm happy with that. Now we're ready to create the inner core. And to do this, I'm going to show you a cheeky technique. Some of you might already be, feel, be familiar with this technique, but um, I'm going to be using the Pathfinder tool to help me. So um, let's look at what we're about to do. So, if we look at this apple, we're about to get this this area here of the inner core, this sort of cross section of the apple which has just been bitten out of the side. And we've got two of them to do, so we're going to need to cut this out. Now, we could, in theory, draw around, carefully draw around and draw about this, but because this line of the apple is so intricate, such as here, it's going to be very difficult to sort of to emulate that. So what we're going to do, here's, here's what we're going to do. Well, first of all, we're going to quickly we're going to quickly get the pen tool and we're going to draw out this bite mark. So like I showed you in the last video, I'm just going to quickly draw some points here. Quickly draw some points. Don't worry how harsh it is right now because we can finally tune that. With that done, we're going to invert this. And if you think that some of these points are a bit too harsh, we can use the convert anchor point tool and we can curve them so it doesn't look so harsh. And we can, you know, we can we can do this as much as we like. It's totally up to you, but for now, I'm just going to go with this. For the point of this tutorial, I'm just going to go with this. So we've got that bite section. Let's fill that. 
Okay, now to get that inner core, we're going to need to copy the body. So I'm going to click the core section by pressing Shift and click. We've got them both. Copy, Command C, Control C on a PC. And I'm going to paste this. So what we've got is a copy of the Apple body and a copy of this core section here. So we're going to bring this core section over to the Apple and we're going to place it where we think is appropriate. At the moment it's at the back, at the bottom, so we can rectify this by going up to with the object selected, go to Object, Arrange and bring to Front. Let's zoom in here. And we're going to select the core, and select the body, and come over to our Pathfinder. Now, if we look at the third from the left icon, we've got a tool which is called Intersect. We previously used the Exclude, but on this occasion we're going to use the Intersect. And watch what happens when we click this. Voila! What it has done, it... Um, it's done exactly exactly what it said in the tin there, it intersected that shape. So now we've got the core, and that's very helpful. Um, so we've kept that detail on the outside, and we've cut out the bit on the inside. So I'm going to Command Cut This, Command X, and place our core on that side. There you go. And I'm going to quickly do that to the other side. We don't need that anymore. I'm going to delete it. Zoom in. And I'm going to quickly copy this core, so I'm going to skip ahead so you don't have to watch me do this. Boom! Here we go. We've got our second core. And like we did the first time, we're going to select the core, select the body, copy, move down, and paste. And we're going to move that core over again with the object selected. Object, Arrange, Bring to Front. Let's zoom in. And we're going to do exactly what we did before, selecting both objects and clicking the Intersect. Hmm, it's looking a bit thin there. I'm just going to quickly undo that. Click on that in the core, move it slightly left. Click on them both and click again on our Intersect. That's better. I'm going to command X to cut that. Move back up to our Apple. Paste it in place. We can do this by quickly zooming in and moving it around. That looks good to me. Nice and clean. And putting that section there. Let's fit to canvas. Get rid of that. And that's our call. Now, last thing I want to do is Command Cut. Come over to our layers here. I want to create a new layer and call that Apple Call. And I want to go to Edit, Paste in Place. No nonsense. So, that's our Apple Call. And we're ready to tweak the colors on that now to give it a more three-dimensional look and make it look more like our image there.